মাসিদ তুমি শুরু করে দাও স্যার ওয়ান মিনিট স্যার জাস্ট ফেসবুক লাইভে আছে স্যার good evening dear participants uh, especially dr shohit marchant from mumbai he is the renowned cardiologist from india also robikan patel here from the singali india also professor our panelist here professor supriya rahman dr arun maski from nepal the karif rahman from usa and dr uh, lots of renowned cardiologists from the home and abroad here panelist welcome you uh, everybody today's atlab manual series 9 uh today's uh, there is the uh, two topics i think we will be uh, waiting for excellent lecture i think this will be enlightened our archive also ipd archive also our fellows also also we are also benefited from the lecture i am requesting professor abdul wahid chaudhary sir please uh opening our session good evening everybody and assalamu alaikum i hope during this second or third wave of corona all of you are re remaining safe and sound today we are hoping to enjoy two excellent lectures on left main bifurcation and decay one of the methods of bifurcation stenting i think always uh, make us interest and you always learn something new whenever you heart a new lecture and because the young fellows will be much more benefited because this system of the lectures we are implementing is a step by step and this will be recorded they can review it again and again so that they can gain their skill set with a proper basis of sound underlying knowledge that will be very helpful so uh, with that much ado i am inviting our eminent uh, uh, speakers to deliver their lectures and thank you for their uh, acceptance of our offer to give the lecture in this forum and thank you dear panelist for your gracious presence here thank you everybody uh, before starting i just introduce dr martin few words for uh, him dr shohid martin is a consultant and senior interventional cardiologist he works in different hospital in mumbai 
now in the laboratory hospital and research center in Mumbai, India. Dr. Shohit Marshan has more than 30 years experience in the field of interventional cardiology. He has been trained extensively in invasive cardiology at various renowned centers in the world, laser and rotor operator at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Harvard Medical School, USA, Bellevue University Stent, Harvard and TVR at the University of Brown, France, directional atherectomy and balloon material violation at Hospital of Multigenal Minal, Italy. Dr. Shohit has done pioneer work in the field of Permission Billion University and stands. He is actively involved in complex coronary angioplasty, physiology, imaging, cath lab interventions in cardiodiabetic patients, biopsial stent, scaffold, diagnosing balloons, renal dimension therapy, TABI procedure, and management of advanced heart failure. Dr. Marcin has participated and presented papers in various national international conferences, USA, France, Italy, Africa, China, Dubai. He regularly conducts live angioplasty workshop and lectures in interventional cardiology in India and around the world. We are really grateful, Dr. Martin, to be here. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Uh, please uh, share your screen and start your talk. Dr. Martin. Uh, please unmute yourself. Dr. Martin, please unmute yourself. Dr. Martin, do you have to unmute yourself? Uh, Dr. Martin, do you hear me? Please unmute yourself. So can, uh, now, can you hear me? Yes, yes, nice and uh, loudly. Okay. Uh, please, uh, okay. thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Can you make it full screen? Yeah, we are making full screen. Full, yeah. full screen. Yeah. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay, nice, very nice, okay. Okay, so uh, today's uh, presentation is uh, intervention of left main bifurcation. And uh, we are at the end of 2020. And I'm very happy that I get this opportunity uh, on this uh, respected platform to talk on the left main uh, interventions. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mosin, for being very kind enough and the other panelists and the chairperson. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today with the group in Bangladesh. So uh, all of us know that the left main comes in many sizes and shapes. Uh, as we know that a left main can be right at the ostium of the LAD and a severe stenosis in the circumflex. And if you do an IVUS, you will find a plaque in the distal left main. Similarly, this is a plaque in the distal left main with a severe stenosis. You may have an ostium of the left main involved, the body of the left main involved, and you may have various angles at which the left main originates with severe calcification and the circumflex, which may take an acute calcified uh, a tortuous bend. Uh, there can be a left main with a severe uh, distal left main stenosis uh, with diffuse plaque in the body of the left main. And this is the left main with a severe bifurcation. So the classification that we use is a Medina uh, 111 classification <clears throat> in most of these cases. What is important to know is that the Medina classification does not tell us about the anatomy or the tortuosity or the calcification or the actual uh, physiology, but still for practical reasons, the Medina classification is a good classification to plan our strategies of left main. So as we know that uh, uh, the, the variability of the left main bifurcation, and if you look at the distal left main, it represents 80% of the left main lesion. And you know that in the distal left main, there is a big plaque of atherosclerotic lesion. And we know that there is an involvement of the ostium of the LED and the circumflex. And we know that advanced atherosclerosis in a distal left main is more in the proximal LED than in the left main or in the uh, circumflex. So if you look at the bifurcation angle, 
Uh, if you look at the average left main to circumflex angle is uh, greater than 90 degrees. And if you look at the left main LED, it is relatively straight and the angle is usually less than 60. The problem of this particular angle of left main to left circumflex is that there is a metal fatigue with an acute angle and that predisposes to the strut fracture in the stent which is deployed uh, at the left main left circumflex. But one should also know that at this particular junction, there is an area of low shear stress, uh, which promotes uh, restenosis at the ostium of the circumflex. So if you look at the influence of the bifurcation angle on the outcome following the crush technique, as we know, we try to create either a Y shape or a T shape. And we know that the mace free survival is better with a Y shape than the T shape. But if you look at the DK crush with Shen in the DK crush five, he's also uh, taken many cases of T shaping uh, and uh, uh, shown a very good result also with T shaping uh, in terms of the mace free uh, survival. So what are the problem of uh, stenting from left main to circumflex? You know that in the left main bifurcation, the importance is of the guide wire position and the balloon position. So as you see here, that the proximal guide wire is outside, the mid guide wire is inside, and the distal guide wire is again outside. And if you look at the balloon, then there is a dumbbell shape of the balloon. So this is very classical when you have a left main with the circumflex and the shape of the balloon. But the more important is that the stent, once you deploy, then there is a hinge motion which causes the fracturing in the structure of the stretch struts of the left circumflex stent at the ostium. So if you look at the guide wire position in this particular stretch strut between the left main and the circumflex, there will be no change in the position of the guide wire. But if you look at the balloon dilatation, there is a less uniform uh, overall inflation of the balloon when you deploy the stent. Because in the proximal segment of the balloon, there is an over dilatation in the middle segment of the balloon, there is a restricted, and in the distal segment of the balloon, again, there is an over dilatation. And if you look at this gap, which is the gap, which is the side branch ostium, which you see when you do a bifurcation left main. So what about selecting the strategy? So we know that the circumflex is one of the key elements for the strategy of the left main bifurcation. And that will depend on the size of the circumflex we know whether it's a dominant, a co-dominant, or a non-dominant circumflex, and the area of the geopodized myocardium when the circumflex ostium is involved, and also the osteal location of the plaque and the circumflex, the diffusion of the atheroma. This is very important because we don't know whether the atheroma is just located at the ostium or it also goes into the proximal portion of the circumflex and the bifurcation angle, as we said. So selecting strategy and left circumflex plays a very key role in selecting what strategy you will use for the left main bifurcation PCI. So with stent technique, again, the stent technique will depend on the patient's clinical status. For example, a patient who comes to you with cardiogenic shock and you put him on mechanical circulatory support. And when you do an angiogram, you find that the left main has a big thrombus and it's occluded right at the distal segment of the left main. Now, if you have such a patient clinical status, then your approach will be totally different. You won't go for a DK crush, you know, because you want to quickly get the flow down the LED and the circumflex. So the patient's clinical status is very important on which stent technique will you use in left main bifurcation. Also, as we said, it depends on the anatomical characteristics. So whether calcification, whether thrombus, whether tortuosity and so on and so forth. And yes, the operator expertise is extremely important when you, lift, uh, when you do a left main bifurcation. So the final result is more important than the actual technique that is used when you do a left main bifurcation. Now, if you look at the left main bifurcation and if you look at the IVIS study of both the LED and the circumflex, when there is minimal involvement or no involvement in the left circumflex, or it's a non-dominant circumflex, then obviously you will go left main to LED, which is a provisional technique, and you will stent the main branch, and you will do the IVIS optimization.
and you look at a jailed site circumflex, which is the circumflex branch would be jailed. Now in this jailed circumflex, if the patient has no chest pain, if there are no ECG changes, if there's no hemodynamic problems, then yes, you will finish your angiography there and there. So it, has, uh, it finishes the PCI. But if you feel that the patient has symptoms or there are ST changes, then you will measure the FFR. Now, if the FFR is less than 0.8, then you will either do a final kissing balloon inflation or you'll do a T or a TAP and then an IVUS optimization and then finish your PCI. But if the FFR is more than 0.8, then you will finish the PCI and not attend to the circumflex. So majority of the left main bifurcation can be treated with a provisional approach. So here you can see that there is a diffuse disease in the body of the left main, and you see a single stent has been deployed from the left main to the LAD. So in a left main bifurcation, if you look at this particular study at COBIS, which showed that the survival free from cardiac deaths was better with one stent than with two stents. But if you look at the frequency on the use of the two stents for left main versus non-left main, this was again a Korean registry, which showed that when you are doing a left main, there is a good 40% chance that you will need two stents and you will need one stent in 60% of cases. But in non-left main bifurcation, you look at the LED diagonal or the PDPLV or the CIRC-OM, there's a good 60% or 80% chance that you will use a provisional stenting and do a T-tap or a kissing balloon or a drug-coated balloon in the side branch as and when needed. Because if you look at the TLR and if you look at two stents versus one stent in left main, the TLR is 5.6% if you use one stent or a provisional stenting and two stents uh, has a TLR of 24%. So it means that the provisional stent continues to remain the standard of treatment in all left main bifurcations. So if you compare the DK crush for an unprotected left main with a culotte stenting and you look at the cumulative TLR free survival, it's much better with a DK crush than with a culotte technique. So both the TVR and the TLR free survival at 12 months, the DK crush uh, scores over the culotte group. Because in the culotte group also, we have noticed in a practice, I've stopped doing culotte now, I don't do it very much unless in an emergency, is because of the overcrowding of the metal. Now, if you look at the MACE at five years and the cumulative survival ratio from MACE at five years, and if you compare all the techniques, the DK crush, the culotte, the T stenting, uh, if you look at the uh, kissing stent and the classic crush, you see the DK crush is, seems to uh, be uh, uh, more uh, favorable for a cumulative uh, survival rate free from mace. So this is uh, when we noticed that DK crush stands out uh, as compared to the other uh, techniques of uh, left main bifurcation stenting. So if you look at the definition uh, definition two study, these are subjects with Medina 011 or 111 bifurcation lesion, and the side branch had a reference vessel diameter greater than 2.5 millimeter. So we all know the criteria which were used in the definition two, the major and the minor, and the major was the side branch uh, greater than 10 mm, and the side branch uh, diameter stenosis greater than 70%. And for the minor, it was a length of the lesion, thrombus, moderate calcification, bifurcation angle, and the moderate angulation. So the complex bifurcation lesion was one major and any two minor criteria. And these were randomizedly assigned to the two stent group and the provisional stent group. So these are the typical steps of the DK crush. We all know this, that first you wire both the vessels, then you pre-dilate both the vessels, then you deploy the stent here uh, at the ostium of the uh, side branch, which in this case is the circumflex. And in most cases, 80% of cases, it is the circumflex. And then you crush the stent with the balloon and then you uh, leave the wire inside and then you do a kissing uh, wire. Oh, sorry for this.
So here is the stent in the left main to the LED. And then again, you uh, dilate the struts of the stent. You may dilate with a two millimeter balloon or a 2.5 millimeter balloon and then do a pot and then do a kissing. Oh. And then this is a repot and that's the final result. So as we all know, What is a proximal uh, uh, optimization technique where we take the stent diameter according to the distal main branch? Pot needs to be done before any additional guide wire insertion. And we use a short NC balloon for a plot, pot which is sized to the left main and positioned just up to the ostium of the LED. And it helps to do a better stent uh, position. And it also helps in uh, uh, facilitating the access to the side branch, especially for distal crossing. Now, what about final kissing balloon inflation in a single stent technique? Now, do we always do the final kissing balloon? No, final kissing balloon in my practice, I do not do always. In fact, I feel that leave it alone is better many times, unless the patient has chest pain or ST changes, or the Timmy flow is less than three, or the FFR is less than 0.8, then you can think of a final kissing balloon. So leave it alone or do a routine final kissing balloon. You know, this is the AMC data and it showed leave alone fares better as compared to trying to do a final kissing balloon. Now, if you look at a final kissing balloon and the carina, and if you look at left main having two large branches, there are two stents technique which I indicated to preserve the size of the vessel. So if we implant only one stent as the carina is not affected, you know, so this is the carina and this is the deployment of the stent. So carina is not affected by the atherosclerotic lesion. It's just a soft tissue and therefore it will move towards the opposite direction. So after the second stent implantation, now the carina will be shifted again on the opposite side. So we need a final kissing balloon so that both the branches are kept in the same size. And this becomes very important why two stents in a final kissing balloon and carina become so important, especially when the vessels are big. And you see there is a minimal overlap and there is a proximal large balloon. And you also see that uh, the side branch has got an ostium, which is nice, large and open uh, uh, central uh, circular uh, ostium of the side branch. Now you look at optimal kissing. So what is optimal kissing? So balloon size has to be according to the distal reference. We know all this. We also know that we have to use a short balloon and a non-compliant balloon. Uh, there is a short overlap of the uh, non-compliant balloon. We know that first you have to dilate the side branch and then do the simultaneous. So the circumflex first and then followed by LED dilatation and then both and at least keep the balloons inflated if the patient can tolerate for 20 to 30 seconds and the final pot or the repot, which we can say that. So if you look at left mid bifurcation treated with single stent and you look at the anatomy versus the FFR. So if there is a jailed side branch, angiographic jailing may be seen in 42% of cases. But if you do a FFR or you do a physiology, you will find that only 7% of patients will have a FFR less than 0.8. So why IVUS is important? We say IVUS guidance save life and left main bifurcation, one has to do an IVUS and you can see the cumulative mortality benefit of doing a left main with the IVUS than without an IVUS. So single stent crossover with the IVUS guidance will give you an idea about the status of the circumflex disease at the ostium it will help you to select your stent size proper, and it will also give you a good idea about your stent optimization and the approximation of the strut of the stents on the arterial wall. You will also know the FFR guided physiology is very important when you deal with the side branch because large number of patients, you may feel that there is a jailing of the side branch, but when you do an FFR, you find that it is, it is more than 0.8. So this is a left main bifurcation, insignificant circumflex disease, as you can see in these IVUS images. And here circumflex is not treated, 
there is a single stent which has been deployed left main to the LED, so single stent. But you see the circ ostium is widely open and the FFR is non-ischemic. So see a single stent with a bifurcation where the circ is widely open. So this is the post-stenting IVUS, which showed that the struts of the stent are well opposed on the arterial wall. And you see the ostium of the circumflex as a mild plaque. This is a little fibro fatty plaque with a little speck of calcium, but the FFR is negative and it's a non-ischemic circumflex. So what's the clinical impact of the intravascular ultrasound? And you know that uh, uh, ultrasound uh, is extremely important, especially when you're doing a left main with two stent technique. This diagram, all of us know that these are the sizes that we have to achieve. The five, six, seven, and eight, the seven is at the polygon or confluence. And we know that the ISR rate uh, comes down to less than 5% if you do a complete expansion and try to achieve uh, these, uh, uh, th these areas for the uh, stent, uh, minimum stent areas. This is for the Asian population. And we know that for the Caucasian uh, population, that these go to six, seven, nine, and 10. And uh, uh, that depends on the size of the body surface area. So in a left main, the lesion preparations are very important. Most of you know that left mains are calcified. There's greater angulation and tortuosity. There is more fibrous tissue. And therefore, very important planning and a thoughtful approach with good lesion preparation with cutting balloon, with angiosculpt, with rotablator, with OPN, with IVL, with orbital atherectomy is critically important when you deal the success of a distal left main. Now, uh, as we know that OCT is another problem in left main, and we know there are a lot of artifacts that happen in the OCT when you do the left main. Now, why do I keep on talking about doing IVUS even in my life courses, where I have done IVUSs but not OCT, because somehow I'm not convinced with the various images of the OCT in the left main. Ostium of the left main, surely I was, though uh, Ziad Ali has tried to convince me many times that despite the artifacts in the left main, OCT is still, especially in the mid portion of the body of the left main or the distal left main can give you good imaging. So this is the uh, European guidelines. As you already know that IVUS is considered to optimize uh, the treatment of unprotected left main. And we also know how to improve the OCT quality in the left main, that basically to cannulate the guide well and to inject, because if the guide is hanging out and you're injecting, you will not be able to get. So look for a better guideline coaxial alignment uh, and you will get a good uh, acquisition technique. So how to improve the quality in left main? As I told you that the quality will only improve in the left main if you have kept your guide coaxial and not a guide which is pointing up because if the guide is pointing up, you will not be able to inject properly and you will not get proper imaging and you will have this kind of swelling of blood in the left main. And here you see they've got a good imaging uh, in the uh, left main. So if you compare IVUS versus left main, Though now we have the 60 megahertz IVUS, which is an IVUS HD. It gives you much better quality. But you see here to find a dissection and imagine a dissection here is almost impossible. Whereas here you are seeing in the OCT a very good medial dissection in the left main. So you see the dissection is extended into the media and that makes it, even if you look at the struts of the stent. Now these are malopause struts of the stent. Whereas if you look in the OCT, you can actually see the distance between the vessel wall and the uh, struts of the stent. So they become so important that you have the malopause strut of the stents, uh, which you can detect more clearly with the OCT. The interpretation of IVUS, in fact, I've written a book on the IVUS and my cassette on the IVUS became very popular in 2006, 2007, uh, when we uh, were using only IVUS and we had the 40 megahertz. But today it looks like that I'm falling in for OCT and especially with Ziad Ali being a friend, uh, he's convincing me also to do OCT uh, left main. Uh, so this was a comparison. Don't, we don't have much data on OCT versus IVS comparison in the left main, but there is some small data. Uh, uh, so this is the ostium of the left main. And here, surely IVS is the technique. Whereas if it is a distal left main, then one can think of an OCT too. So this is the distal left main and one can consider an OCT. So in the pre-PCI OCT, 
can the ELB identify that both the proximal and the distal reference segment? So you know EL to EL uh, in an OCT is quite accurate. And uh, unlike the IVUS where you tend to overestimate, but now with the IVUS HD or the 60 megahertz, you be, it, it gives you as good accuracy as an OCT. Uh, we've just acquired a, a 60 megahertz in my hospital, uh, but in the OCT, the other advantage is that it works on artificial intelligence. So it gives you a lot of automatic uh, measurements on the smallest, uh, even mean luminal diameter. And the reference uh, stent length is also decided by the OC automation. So that is, uh, so, but with the OCT, one problem is that you have to uh, dilate the vessel with a 1.5 or a two millimeter balloon to adequately visualize the different uh, distal reference if the degree of lumen obstruction would interfere. Because if uh, you put in the uh, OCT catheter and you're injecting dye and there's no clearance of uh, blood, then you may actually induce uh, ventricular uh, tachyarrhythmia. So it will help you, as we all know, uh, Ziad Ali's uh, famous uh, MLD Max, and this is nothing but the MLD Max, which I'm talking about. Uh, if you are not too sure of the uh, position, then you may have to post dilate and then try to achieve the uh, mi uh, mi minimal stent uh, areas. So that's the final OCT image. So this is a patient who's a 57 year old and you see that uh, there's a tight stenosis in the uh, distal left main and this is the right coronary which is normal. The first thing in this particular left main which I would do would be a physiology both of the LED and the circumflex. And you see that in the LED it's 0.77 and in the circumflex it's 0.73. So what I've done is in the LED we have put a run through wire in the ramus is a BMW wire and in the circumflex is a C on blue. And PCI planning is done normal to normal. You look at the diff, uh, distal reference sizing and the left main size mismatch. And uh, uh, you can either do an IVUS or OCT. In this case, uh, we have done OCT. So here uh, you see the IVUS uh, comparison with the OCT. And if you look at the diameter, now with the HD megahertz 60, it is uh, similar to that of uh, uh, OCT, but the added advantage of the OCT is that besides getting the proper distal uh, reference, you also get a good uh, look at the side branch. So in our patient, you can look at the ramus and you can look at the circumflex. So you see how well you see the ostium. You know, this becomes very important because if you see the ostium well, you know whether to stent or not, whether to use a scoring balloon or whether to just put in a drug eluding balloon. Uh, this is one more area where I'm working now with is to put a stent called abluminous in the left main, uh, which is like a drug-coated balloon with a drug-coated stent, and put a drug-coated balloon in the side branch. So I've done about uh, eight cases up till now, and I'm going to publish it soon once I achieve my first 20 cases of putting an abluminous stent, which is called DEBS, which is a drug-eluding balloon with stent, which is abluminous uh, uh, coating with uh, cerulumus and also the drug-coated balloon, which is a magic touch with a nanotechnology, and uh, uh, that can be used in the uh, side branch. So I'll be publishing my uh, data and my follow-up patients. Uh, we are just on it. Also, as we know that the stent length can be obtained very nicely uh, on the longitudinal view. And you we keep saying that, uh, oh, uh, there is a poor uh, tissue penetration with OCT as compared to IVUS. But really, it does not matter at the lesion site because at the lesion site, uh, what we uh, need is uh, to look at the morphology of the plaque. Uh, we want to look at the diameter and the length and that all we can achieve with OCT. Uh, what is uh, important to uh, notice, uh, if you look at this, there are a lot of calcium here. Now, once there is a curtain of calcium in an IVUS, again, the tissue penetration will be poor only, and you'll not be able to see the, say, the lipid core. Here you are seeing the uh, lipid, uh, uh, which is a low attenuation in this particular IVUS image. Uh, so here also you are seeing it, but you know, because of the calcium, uh, it's produced a curtain, and hence uh, there is a poor tissue penetration even in IVUS. So this is the proximal reference diameter. And uh, this was the balloon uh, case where we did a balloon dilatation with a semi-compliant balloon and then deployed a stent left main to uh, LAD, a 3.5 or 28 uh, drug eluding stent, and then post-dilated it with a 512 NC balloon. 
and this is the post-tent result of the left main. Now you see, if you are looking at the left main, you're seeing the struts of the left main well opposed on the arterial wall. So this is the cross-sectional view. I agree that there is a swelling of the blood and at certain levels, you will not get as clear images uh, when you're doing the left main, but even me, I'm trying to do and trying to capture the images in the left main and uh, maybe in the future, I'll be able to uh, give you greater images of the ostium of uh, the, the body and the distal left main. So this is the reference MLA 6.93, uh, as you can see here, and the MSA is 7.45 in this particular case. And the other advantage of the, as you all know that we have the 3D, uh, which you can very well uh, see in the left main, and you see the ostium is so well uh, seen in this particular configuration. Uh, this imaging you don't get in the IMAS. So I'm a little bit sold now on the left main. And let me conclude by just uh, telling you about DK crush uh, step by step. So this was the DK crush uh, five by Shen. And uh, I happen, he's a good friend of mine. And here he shows that there is a, a stent, a provisional stent. But you see that at the end of six months, there is a critical stenosis uh, right at the ostium of the circumflex when patient is presented with unstable angina. But if you use a DK crush, you see this is uh, the distal left main and a DK crush has been used. And you see the final result at the 13 month follow up in the DK crush uh, five. So this is the original cases. Uh, we have also participated in the DK crush. So this was the definition trial, which I already told you. So this was the TLF free survival at one year. Let me just tell you how we uh, do it. I'm sure most of you uh, know the DK crush, but my approach to DK crush is, uh, as I told you that I wire both the LED and the circumflex, and in a left main, I pre-dilate the circumflex, and uh, uh, we stent the left circumflex, which is taken here as a side branch. The LED diameter is 3 mm, the left main diameter is 4 mm. I do a two-step balloon crush. So I crush the uh, stent in the circumflex with a balloon in the LED left main with a 3 mm balloon and the left main pot with a 4 mm balloon, but not removing the circumflex wire. And uh, there are at least two views to make sure that I'm actually going through the proximal cell. One more advantage of OCT in the left main is that I can actually see the proximal cell or the mid cell or the distal cell. And uh, you can uh, wire the proximal cell uh, with the OCT uh, when you do an OCT of the distal left main. And then you do a two millimeter overlapping of the balloon in the main vessel. Don't try to do too much uh, balloon overlap in the left main. Uh, and uh, it's a side by side uh, balloon inflation. And then uh, you'll have to stent the main vessel after you uh, st remove the circumflex wire. This is left main to LED. Uh, and this is uh, the pot with the 4.5 balloon. So if main vessel stent uh, uh, not covered proximal left main, caution should be paid uh, to avoid the dissection. So many of the times I try to cover the ostium uh, of the left main. The only issue is that if you cover the ostium, the subsequent uh, uh, PCI procedures become uh, difficult, but I've created a technique which is not in the purview of this particular talk. But the next time, uh, uh, if a Sufi Rahman invites me, I will uh, uh, talk about uh, how to uh, handle the uh, left main. So this is uh, the removal of the proximal cell uh, rewiring of the proximal cell, but uh, I was speaking to Shen and he was saying that when you do the rewiring, you can also use the mid cell. So this is the kissing balloon and that's the final pot. So as I told you that it's best not to overlap the balloons too much. So keep two millimeter of the balloon and this is a pot. And when you do a pot, as we all know, that we try to keep at the carina and not after the bifurcation. Otherwise, you distort the struts of the stent. So let me conclude with the take home message on this particular cartoon on uh, the bifurcation stenting with DK crush, which is my favorite uh, technique. Uh, so my final thoughts uh, are that, uh, uh, yes, uh, we are doing uh, more and more left mid bifurcations now. Uh, compared to about uh, three, four years back. Now I take up all the challenging left main cases. Uh, provisional stenting to me continues to remain the default uh, strategy. And, uh, but we are starting uh, using more and more uh, two stent technique in the left main up to 50%. And for me, 
uh, DK Crush, not because Shed is my friend, but DK Crush seems to me in my experience uh, as a strategy for a two-stent technique. And I believe in this, what I'm telling. And yes, the integrated use of physiology, IVAS, and now OCT for optimization of the stent and PCI. Thank you so much for your very, very kind attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the, your simplified way. It's complex process. It's very simplified way. So much palatable. I think our fellows and also we are really delightful. Dr. Professor Abdul, sir, few comments. Uh, Mohsin, you have already expressed uh, my feelings. Uh, complex thing and shown very gently in a systematic way, uh, in a comprehensible way and very palatable way so that we can make things much more simple. But I want to tell the fellows, please take up the not many much challenging cases at first. Gradually, you shift to complex cases. Calcified lesion, if, if you don't have the hardware with you, don't go for it. You have to have the proper hardware to achieve a very good result. There's a prerequisite that you should never forget. Uh, so very you, true. So very true. Yes, uh, Mohsin, uh, Dr. Mohsin Ahmed, uh, Madam Sufia Rahman, uh, Professor yes. Abdul, uh, and uh, all my other colleagues. Uh, you know, my uh, wife has got admitted in the hospital. So uh, I just uh, spoke to Partha and I said, I'm just coming for this session and I have to go back to the hospital. Uh, so please excuse me, my apologies. But next time I will give you two hours of discussion on any topic of your choice. Thank, thank you, you, Madam uh, Sufia Rahman. Uh, excellent talk you have given, even with this stress in your mind. It is excellent presentation, no double doubt about it. I think you should go ahead to see your wife now. Uh, we have, uh, you have already enlightened us. Our fellows are enlightened. But really, really, your presentation was so nice even this maximum stress in your mind. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for a beautiful presentation. And we'll probably discuss it later on or uh, some other time, but it is excellent presentation. Please go ahead and go to your wife. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you, Dr. Mohsen. Yeah, thank you, sir. For your kind invitation. Early recovery for your wife. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, uh, our next presenter, Dr. Kanpal, do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we uh, we will go to the second talk. After that, we can discuss more. Okay, Dr. Ravi Kanpal. Yeah. I just give some introduction about Dr. Ravi Kant. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ravi Kant M. Patil is the professor of cardiology an interventional cardiologist of Bharati Medical College, Sangli, and director of Sivasadan Super Speech Hospital, Miyaj. Uh, he did his uh, MBBS from the Krishna Institute of Medical Science, Karad, Maharashtra, then did MD, 2004 for general medicine, then DNB from CMC Valor, then did his DM, 2010 from the Jain Medical College, Balagam, Kai University, and then also awarded FACC 2014. He did uh, more than 30,000 of invasive procedure and performed more than 10,000 geoplasties, more than 600 balloon microphalopathy and 500 permanent pacemaker doing ASD, PDA closure and peripheral intervention and coactation balloon angioplasty. Uh, he, he has lots of teaching experience. He is teaching undergraduate student 2001, then postgraduate student 2004, and assistant professor of cardiology 2010 to 11, assistant professor of Bharati Medical College 12 onwards, teaching experience of various other medical fields, students, nursing staffs, and cardiovascular techn technicians. Here he, uh, he was awarded lots of awards from his, from his school level, national scholarship from the high school, awarded National Scholarship for Higher Secondary School, Gold Medalist in MBS, stood second in state during MD Medicine, Gold Medal in DM Cardiology degree awarded by 
Balaram Bargua Ames and Dr. Mahajan of Mumbai. Dr. Rabikant Patil conducted as a faculty of different conference at Homina Abroad. He has presented interesting cases and lectures in different con conference around the globe. He has a very, very good number of publications in international reported industry journal. I welcome Dr. Rabikant Patil. We are very much grateful to your presence here. Thank you, Dr. Rabikant. Good evening, sir. And uh, thank you for this kind words. I'll share my screen. Uh, so, uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity, uh, Dr. Mohsin. I'll be talking about the decay crush technique, case based discussion. Most of my points are covered by Dr. Merchant already. So, uh, we'll uh, go, uh, not go into details of the, some of the points. I have confessions to make here that uh, uh, I have not um, brought my IWAS images. I preferably do IWAS in all my cases, but I have not brought those images with. Uh, uh, routine and geographic images are here and uh, I got to know that this is for the basically for the beginners and the intermediate uh, fellows so I try to keep it as a, a very basic uh, talk. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. So let's go with the fundamental aspects of the bifurcation lesions and then uh, talk about the DK crush technique. All of us know that the bifurcations are very vulnerable to atherosclerosis. And uh, we should uh, also know when we talk about the bifurcation, this figure is very, very important. That when we talk about the bifurcation, it's always about the wall shear stress. And the wall shear stress, it depends upon the viscosity and the spatial gradient of the blood velocity at the walls. So if you see the flow across the both the bifurcation lesions, as the flow goes, uh, when, when it is in a proximal vessel, it is a linear flow. But once it goes beyond the carina and beyond the bifurcation into the side branches, the flow becomes oscillatory. The flow becomes, uh, uh, you know, with a low wall shear stress. And that's why when you talk about the bifurcation, the lesions are more onto the lateral walls and the carinal angle is free of the atherosclerotic lesions. That is the reason why uh, these uh, atherosclerotic plaques affect the lateral wall of the, both the bifurcation vessels as well as sometimes the proximal main vessels. Most of the time, carinal angles are the free of the lesion. This, is, this, this figure is very important to understand the physiology and the anatomy happening at the bifurcations. Uh, so, According to ABC, bifurcation is defined as the coronary artery narrowing occurring adjacent to and or involving the origin of the significant side branch. So what is a significant side branch? The significant side branch is the branch which you do not want to lose in a global context of a particular patient. Either it is because of the symptoms, either it is because of the location of the ischemia like uh, circumflex artery, the branch which is responsible for symptoms and the ischemia the viable vessel of the collateral size and the size basically more than 2.5 millimeter. So this is in a wide context, the physiological, symptomatic and the anatomical location and the size of the vessel is also equally important when you talk about the side branch. There are different classification. Uh, uh, we all know about the um, side branches and the bifurcations. It's like Sanborn, Safian, Duke, Lefebvre, Medina and Mohair. There are different classification by the different authors, but for all practical purposes, when we talk about the bifurcations, we take into consideration Medina classification. So what is this Medina classification? Uh, this is basically a three point uh, classification. The first point is the lesion more than 50% present on the main branch. That is the proximal part of the bifurcation. The second point is about the distal part of the main branch. And third is because of the side branch. The lesion more than 50%. This is what we take into the Medina classification. Suppose we uh, consider this lesion. There is a lesion on a proximal main branch. There is a lesion on a distal main branch. And there is a side branch lesion, which is also 50%. This, this becomes 111. You consider this diagram 
this is one, this is zero, this is one. So this becomes one, zero, one. If you talk about this, then this is zero, one, one. So, uh, so the things goes on. So this is what is a Medina classification. And we use this classification to identify the true bifurcation from the pseudo bifurcation or the importance of the stenting or the importance of the uh, lesion preparation in this uh, things. But there are limitations of the Medina classification as it does not take into account for the length of the disease in the ostium of the side branch, which is very important that it should be more than five millimeter. When we talk about the Lepman, the length of the Lepman before bifurcation is not accounted into the Medina classification, which is important for the deciding the strategy of uh, stent, uh, stenting in the Lepman. It does not take consideration for a trifurcation. Vessel angulation, whether it is 90 degree, less than 70 degree, more than 70 degree, this is all not uh, taken into account into the Medina classification. There's no differentiation is made between the normal segment and the lesion free segment and other complicated factors like tortuosity, calcifications, all those things are not defined by this classification. But then again, uh, for all practical purposes, we should understand what is Medina classification, what is a true bifurcation, and what is the uh, pseudo bifurcations in these cases. What are the stenting techniques? What all, uh, there are different variety of stenting techniques. It generally, when we start interventions for a beginners and intermediate cardiologist, it becomes very difficult to understand. There are so many uh, bifurcation uh, techniques, uh, which one to follow, which uh, actually is uh, meaningful, and how to do those uh, techniques. Th th this is a question always when we start our career initially, this is what we go uh, across. So the classification is uh, basically a maths classification that is main across distal and side classification. And based mainly on this position, uh, th this classification based on mainly a uh, position of the first end which is implanted. Uh, you can see this, this is the M, this is A, this is D, and this is S. M is main proximal first, that is put a stent in a proximal main vessel. This is, is called as a M. So there are different techniques. Like this, this, this is the put a stent before the bifurcation and then dilate it with the balloon and then come with the second stent. Either it is curved technique or it is extended V. Anything out of this can be done if you uh, consider it as a main proximal first. Then second technique considers that you put, should put a stent across the side branch. That is main and then go across the side branch. And then uh, there are different techniques comes under this heading that is uh, elective T-stenting, tap, clot, internal crush. All those techniques are basically uh, comes under this uh, classification. But for this, you require a good proximal size uh, vessel. Uh, you require uh, uh, one stent in the proximal and another stent is into a distal and middle part of the main stent. So this is important uh, in this technique. D is double stent. That means in a single uh, artery, in a proximal main, you can put a two stents like SKS. We can put the stents simultaneously in uh, like we put into the SKS. And now most important uh, followed uh, in most of these centers is a side branch first. That is mini crush, crush or the systemic T stenting. So this, this is an overall gross classification of a bifurcation techniques. Once we consider, once we understand the anatomy at the, by Medina classification, we once we understand uh, overall uh, uh, scenario into this uh, technique, then we come across, we choose one of these techniques. So exactly uh, what 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 is the clinical trial? What are the clinical basis of these uh, single stand versus double stand techniques? Most of the trials which are done like uh, Nordic 1, BBC, EBC 2, and then now DK Crush 1 to DK Crush 5, all those uh, uh, studies what uh, has demonstrated that most of the uh, studies except the DK crush 2 and DK crush uh, 5 showed that a meta-analysis of these all randomized trials demonstrated that both treatment strategies resulted in a similar outcomes in terms of risk of cardiac death, target lesion revascularization and stent thrombosis. So there is no 
added benefit of putting a double stent instead of a provisional stent technique then uh, if you compare nordic 4 and ebc 2 this trial also showed no benefits or the no difference between the provisional and two stent techniques which regards to a major uh, cardiac uh, events and now at present most of the recommendations are in favor of a single stent strategy and uh, they advise most of the guidelines advise to go for a provisional stenting first and if the provisional you require go for the double uh, stenting only dk crush 2 and dk crush 5 shows that there is a in a true bifurcation lesion mainly in a left main uh, we favor two stent strategy and all those patients are followed up to now one to two years and in a left main lesion dk crush uh, technique has shown a better results than any other uh, uh stent uh, techniques so these are the uh, some of the clinical trials or the meta analysis were simple uh, or a complex stenting for bifurcation coronary lesions uh, they assess more than 413 patients and the uh, their uh, result was uh, in a pooled analysis of nordic 1 and bbc 1 trial the simple strategy was associated with lower rates of the composite end point death mi and tvr at the 9 months it also have a reduced procedure duration fluoroscopy times contrast volume and risk of the periprocedural mi the advantage of this strategy is also apparent in true bifurcations those with the large side branches long side branches and lesion with the wide bifurcation angles all these places single strategy or the single stent strategy is useful even same in a nordic baltic bifurcation study 4 the conclusion was uh, uh, after 6 month two stent technique for the treatment of a two bifurcation lesion with a large side branch showed no significant difference in a mace rate compared to a provisional side branch stenting this was the conclusion for this nordic and uh, uh, nordic baltic bifurcation study 4 so most of the studies uh, have advised at present a single stent or the provisional stenting strategy but then among all the two stent strategies dk crush is the most favor strategy so when we talk about the true true bifurcation that is significant stenosis on the main and the side branch uh, if it is there and uh, the so if the uh, bifurcation is a significant bifurcation or the significant stenosis on the both the branches uh next thing will be uh, if it is not there then it is a provisional side branch stenting as uh, i was discussing before if it is uh, a significant stenosis on the both main and the side branches uh, we should assess the side branch whether it is suitable for a stenting that means whether the side branch is more than 2.5 mm whether side branch is uh, um, uh, not much angulated if there is a lesion which goes across the Uh, more than uh, 5 mm all those things are present then we should assess the side branch the disease extends from the ostium or not if it doesn't extend from the ostia still we can try for a proximal side branch stenting but if the side branch disease which extends from the ostia then we should go for a elective implantation of two stents that is main branch and the side branch both so it all depends upon Uh, which type of uh, stenting you uh, require whether you should go ahead with the provisional side branch or whether you should go for a two branch strategy so this is another uh, 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 approach to the same uh, problem if the preferred approach is always provisional side branch stenting with a pot if the side branch is more than uh, if you you do a side branch stenting and then assess the Uh, if you do a main uh, main st uh, stent main branch stenting and then you assess the side branch if the side branch is more than 75% residual stenosis if there is a dissection if there is a decreased flow and ischemia into the side branch then you can think about the t stenting and uh, enter into the distal stud either tap or a clot technique if the side branch is less than 75% uh, of a residual stenosis there is no dissection flow is normal there is no ischemia if you do ffr the far is good more than 0.8 better to leave alone this territory and then uh, you can proceed with the final kissing balloon but if it is a complex lesion uh, with a difficult side branch access the high risk occlusion then always uh, better to 
uh, go for a uh, two stent strategy in this uh, cases either dk crush clot or systemic tree stenting any one of them let's go to a, a dk crush uh, i'll not go into a details of any other uh, bifurcation technique here because our topic today is uh, about the dk crush so these are the 10 diagrams where the dk crush is explained uh, if you see the first one is a side branch stenting with a short main branch protrusion there is a proximal branch there is a distal and then there is a side branch cross a wire into both the uh, branches both the side branch and the main branch put the stent into a um, uh, side branch first with a little protrusion maybe less than 1 mm protrusion into the main branch then bring on the nc balloon and uh, crush uh, the first side branch stent once you crush the stent recross the wire into the struts this is the step number 3 once you recross the wire take the two balloons both the balloons are crossed across uh, uh, one into the side branch one into the main branch and then this is the first kissing balloon inflation that is first kbi of the double kissing crush technique and once you uh, do a first kbi the second is put a main branch stent across the side branch after the side branch wire is removed this is very important that remove the side branch wire put a second stent there then do a pot this is called as a first uh, pot proximal optimization technique you uh, dilate the struts of the proximal main branch and then you recross the wires one from the main branch to a side branch and from the side branch to the main uh, branch make sure that once you first cross the wire into the side branch and then when you cross another wire into a main branch don't go with a rotating techniques because in a rotating technique you are uh, going to entangle the wires again so second wire should not be uh, rotated much when you go into the second uh, branch whatever you are going side branch or the main branch then you do a, a second kissing balloon inflation both in side and main and then ninth is a re uh, pot technique and 10th is a final result this is this is how uh, you should go so there is a two crush two uh, kissings that is a first kissing and the second kissing and there are two times pot the first pot and the second pot these are the two important steps when we talk about the double kissing uh, crush technique so this is the systemic uh, presentation of a dk crush technique i'll uh, show you a case uh, uh, and then we'll discuss about how we should go ahead with the uh, this case so this is a case this is led diagonal bifurcation if you uh, see clearly the led lesion is a long lesion there is a disease in a proximal segment there is a disease in a distal segment then there is a disease in the ostea of the diagonal which is around 70 to 80% this is there and then uh, this is medina 111 uh, series the most important thing here is both the diagonal and the led if you see a distal uh, lesions or distal vessels they are equally uh, of a same uh, e equal diameter the proximal lesion extends long into across till the ostea down there so your proximal uh, part of the stent should be a longer than the uh, distal part of the stent and you have to cross across uh, 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 the segment there so as usual you cross two wires then uh, this is a one in a distal one is in a main vessel preferably do not uh, get a hydrophilic wire into the uh, diagonal or the side branch whatever you are crossing because it is uh, meant to be a gelled or trapped in further uh, double kissing techniques number 2 don't keep the hydro don't keep the uh, the distal segment distal 30 mm uh, segment into the bifurcation this segment which is a radial uh, lucent segment should not be kept into the bifurcation it should be always crossed distally so then the chances of entrapment are less these are the two important points to notice when we talk uh, about uh, the wire crossing here second thing is uh, here in this case uh, we had a um, significant disease proximally so i had to dilate uh, proximally in this uh, case and then as you see the first is putting a side branch stent 
so this is a side branch stent abdominus the side branch uh, this is a 3 uh, 23 stent into the uh, diagonal you can see uh, at the main branch, I have kept only uh, one millimeter into the protruding into uh, a main branch. And ideally, most of the times I keep one balloon down here because sometimes once you put a stent in a side branch, uh, most of the times what happens is if you don't have the accurate judgment on to in the beginning, if you don't have the accurate judgment of the protrusion into the main branch, it's very difficult to cross a balloon across to press this side branch. So I prefer to keep a, a balloon uh, preferably into a distal segment first, across, put across a stent into the side branch, and then you crush. This is the second part. That is you crush by the NC balloon uh, to the first stent. So this is the first crush. Once you crush, the same balloon can be advanced proximally. Once you advance this ten proximally, both the balloons uh, are, uh, then this is a first kissing. This is called as a first kiss. This is the first kissing uh, for the DK crush. And then after the first uh, kissing, take kissing, you go to a next uh, level. That I have withdrawn the uh, balloon here. And then this is a uh, I couldn't cross uh, my first, as I told you, that even after the crushing the balloon, so I have just additionally uh, dilated again in the same uh, area. Then this is a stent. This is again abdominus uh, 3.532 stent, which uh, we have crossed across the LAD. And this is after crossing a LAD diagonal. So once I put a second stand, the first I put a first stand, then uh, casing, and then I put the second stand. Now comes the important role of the pot, that is the proximal optimization techniques. Why it is important is, if you can see, when you put a main vessel stand, your diameter is to the distal branch of the main vessel. So your diameter here can be a 3, 3.2, and the proximal diameter can be the higher side diameter. So there, there is a stent which remains unopposed into the proximal uh, part of the main vessel. So the most important thing is take a non-compliant balloon whose tip should be kept at the carina or before carina to do a pot so that you expand the proximal part of the stent. And once you expand the proximal part of the stent, the studs which opens up at the bifurcation. This is important because you have to recross a wire from here, this place. Then again, you have to recross your balloon and your uh, balloon in this part. So, so this is very important to uh, do a pot which expands the cells of this tent. Also, it optimizes the proximal part of the main vessel. So this is importance of a pot. So this is a pot. As I told you, the proximal part of this uh, artery was in a it had a was a more length than the distal part, so I have to do a pot into the two parts in this place, and then I I prefer to take a small balloon that is eight to ten millimeter balloon and the non-compliant balloon here. Once you do a pot, second important thing is to recross a wire. The recrossing can be sometimes difficult. There are different techniques to recross. As you see, the angle is less here. Sometimes angle is very uh, wide or the acute in that scenario it is it becomes very difficult to recross the wire so what you can do is you can do a second pot here with the higher uh, nc balloon so the studs can get open next important thing what you can do sometimes there is a reverse wire technique that the wire uh, can be you know you can give a curve to the wire proximal and distal curve the distal curve should be a of a 90 degree curve and then you pull back the wire and the wire falls into the side branch and then you can enter the wire. So these are the some difficulty, difficult things during the DK crush that is difficult wire crossing. Sometimes the, if the wire crossing is difficult, what you can do is you can put a small balloon that is one 1.5 millimeter balloon on the jailed wire, inflate the uh, proximal stent and then assess the side branch and then try to recross the side branch. This is also a technique used for the difficult uh, crossing of the wires. 
so this is the recrossing of the wire and then this is the second case that is the final case then we recrossed we have taken two balloons most important is size of the non compliant balloon we all know the formula mares law that is uh, you should take the size of the, 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 the both the balloons has taken should be the size of the distal vessels the proximal thing should be a 0.678 into proximal the distal branch plus the side branch this is this is the formula for the proximal uh, uh, dilatation of the uh, stent so that um, that is called as a morphy's law and this is the final uh, casing next important uh, thing is uh, there is always debate about the proximal crossing and distal crossing if i see uh, practically it's very difficult to understand whether your wire is crossed proximally or whether your wire is crossed distally unless until you are doing your case uh, with the ivs or the oct guidance so in just a two day just in a angiographic view it's very difficult to understand whether your wire cross proximally or distally but there is the importance of this uh, wire crossing why it should go uh, distally and not proximally is if you can see this if your wire goes proximally and then you dilate with the balloon the whole stent assembly gets stuck between the proximal and distal part and there is a distortion between the side branch but if your wire is crossed from the most distal most distal most cut here and then you dilate the uh, this vessel then whole this stent structure will come and will fall onto the side branch lateral wall so that gives a unhindered access to a balloon as well as the blood flow across the distal side branch so that is very important that your uh, uh, wire should cross a distal strut and not the proximal strut so this this was the case and then this was the final result as you say this was the final result which was assessed by the ivers with the second part the first part was uh, before uh, double crush and this is after the double crush this is the second part which is also again important then again uh, assess all this uh, arterial things with the ivers and then you decide i'll just uh, show you uh, next 5 minutes uh, two more cases and then we'll wind up our discussion so this is again uh, case number 2 in a case number 2 if you see this if you see this there is again medina 111 lesion the same uh, thing but the proximal segment was a wide segment not like before the lesion or the arterial size was also same uh, for both proximal middle and distal part and the length of the lesion was very small here so again we have gone with the similar strategy this is uh, first case stent second stent and then again recrossing of the wire and double case the problem with this case was we had a difficult time in recrossing the lesion here even the lesion looked uh, normal there is a calcium spur at the just at the side branch uh, bifurcation so there was a difficulty in cross rewiring the lesion here and then this is a final crash and uh, and pot and this is the final result and case number 3 uh, was a left main it was a distal left main bifurcation most important thing if you see here that the led is a small vessel than the uh, circumflex so i decided to treat circumflex as a main vessel and led as a side branch and then this is again medina 111 there is a quite room in the proximal area of the uh, left main there is a good uh, distal circumflex and then there is a led uh, here what i have done is i have crossed the um, uh, i crossed the two wires and the stent what i have treated was a left main or the led as the uh, side branch put the side branch stent as a led stent and circumflex being a bigger vessel i decided to go do it as a main branch stenting so then second stent into the left main all the uh, 
the steps of the decay crash was followed so this was the pot followed by the uh, distal widening and then wire crossing and this was the final result so uh, concluding my talk uh, after this decay crush 1 uh, uh, to 5 series uh, there is uh, this decay crush has been preferred method of all two stent strategy especially when we are dealing with the left main bifurcations the difference between the classical crush and decay crush is the use of first kbi after balloon crush of a implanted side branch stent leaving only one layer of metal skirt at the osteal side branch this is very important it started with the classical crush but then Uh, now we are into a decay crush because there is only one layer of metal strut at the ostia of the side branch there is also uh, now there are some of the people who are performing modified decay crush which is again a more simple and seems to be a give, giving the similar results uh, nowadays what we do in a modified decay crush is the first kiss after the crushing is replaced by the balloon dilatation of the side branch to a crushed main branch stent that means you just uh, avoid first kiss and instead of a first case you just put a, a stent into the uh, balloon uh, dilatation of the side branch through the crushed main branch stent and then you do a final casing and then pot so uh, whatever technique you use is not important what is important is all bifurcation techniques are case and operator dependent and one should make a choice of a case dependent upon the case anatomy and once operative convenience that is most important thing when we deal with the bifurcations thank you very much for the patient listening uh thank you dr ravigant you thank illustrated and case the discussion i think it is most helpful for our fellows because uh, step by step discussion with illustration and case thank you dr ravigant uh professor wadu sir i think uh, our distinguished guests are here panelist yes. uh, they yes. are making some comments i'll be waiting to hear their opinion Uh, I also, Dr. Timid. Welcome, Timid. Dr. Timid Paul from USA. Dr. Timid. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, for um, invitation and uh, thanks for being a panel here. Uh, I think he did excellent jobs in the, uh, especially for the new uh, comers and beginners. Uh, best method that i also use and i think some more data available um uh the i think that uh, for this particular uh, presentation he showed three three cases and uh, most importantly i think that uh, recrossing the oil uh, in the side band sometimes it be more difficult i think that's the uh, any any challenging cases that we discussed in the before um there are some technique you have to use and sometimes you cannot able to even the across the uh, side band so that's that's the most challenging especially if you have a calcified lesion or very tight osteal um i personally don't um, uh, like uh, gel the uh, oil i don't like it but uh, sometimes i think some uh, some people prefer it so uh, i don't have any specific other um, comments for this uh, presentation thank you uh, dr soms monor sir dr soms monor yeah thank you dr abigans excellent presentation actually i enjoyed your cases very much just a small question actually about your third case you showed where you took the uh, led as a side branch after you finished the stenting led look appeared very big actually same as lcx so uh, abhi the uh, do you regret after doing the procedure that you didn't do the uh, led as a main branch and lcx as a side branch uh, basically sir it looks circumflex as a bigger artery so we did a ivers also in the similar case i couldn't see i just applied initially that i couldn't show my uh, other things but uh, in ivers uh, the circumflex was a bigger artery than the led that's oh. why we confirm that better to go as a circumflex uh, as a first branch and then the led as a side branch Okay, okay, that was excellent actually. My second actually query is uh, uh, not for you really. That was for Dr. Marchand. He was making a comment that while doing the uh, left main bifurcation in the by decay crush technique, he tries to cover the right up to the left main ostium, uh, even though left main ostium may not appear that diseased. 
what is your comment what is your approach do you routinely cover up to the ostium generally sir uh, is is my uh, uh, opinion that uh, if there is no disease at the left main ostia better not to cover a left main ostia this is yeah that we do actually right? but because if you it's do left main ostia it becomes a hassle for in the future yeah yeah uh, subsuno sir I, I have two comments here yeah. uh, there are some thoughts there if it is not covered the ostium mm. it cannot over dilated the proximal stent more uh, as 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 the ibis shown because there is a chance of dissection in the ostial part because if you dilated the 4.5 stent is the 6 mm stents hmm. but if it is also the up to the ostium you can hmm. over dilate the stent as much as possible it is the some thoughts yeah, number that's one true, that's true, that's true, number, yes. number number one number two if is do the pot if sizing of the balloon is easy because hmm. if it is not the touch ostium but usually size of the balloon is 4.5 to 8 or 10 12 sometimes you cannot have the balloon in the cat labs a small size balloon so it is better to cross does the ostium is long uh, is some some thoughts dr arun maski do you comment this regarding dr arun maski do you hear me dr arun yeah. maski does the ostium yeah. or 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 uh, lift the ostium during the yeah. leg i mean it depends on uh, what is the distance from the ostium yeah if it's quite uh, clear near to ostium we'll have to cover the ostium if it's quite far away then it's better to avoid ostium so because you need to intervene second time so that's the my thought any comments regarding the dikk uh, dikk crash today's topic yeah it was nice to present i like the last word because uh he has clearly shown that whatever technique you use you should uh, be experienced in that technique the dikk cross has already been shown in different trials to be superior to other techniques but limitation in our subcontinent you need to use too many hardwares yes that's one yes. limitation second is operator experience should be very very high the beginner should not be trying dk cross technique as he has rightly shown despite being i mean experienced operator sometimes is very difficult to pass third is i think if you are using dk cross you should uh, pass wire proximal struts that's very important thank you then dr khalid mohsin sir dr khalid mohsin sir yes to yes. say something. actually i want to sir yes sir how much you are going to uh, involve the near the ostium or above the ostium that will depend upon the left main size and the balloon available for uh, in your cath lab for the pot yes. you have, to have at least a three many 8 mm or sometimes 6 mm balloon you have to have that much left to for the proper pot and that much you have to extend the stem uh, if it is that very near the ostium is better to cover the ostium the I chance mean, of sun yes sir there they say any use of uh, many involving the ostium dr khalid mohsin sir hi okay thank you mohsin uh, uh, thanks to dr ravi khan for a very illustrative presentation actually the exemplary Uh, things are it makes the whole process complicated process clear to the fellows uh, i have a question to dr ravikant that before attempting dk crash stenting in left main situation do you recommend our younger cardiologists to uh, become conversant with this technique in ladd1 or lcx om or pda plv situations and what number of cases you recommend to Uh, get them habituated before attempting the left main bifurcation by dk crash technique uh, it's very true sir what you said that you should always try those bifurcation techniques when you start doing a bifurcation into om lcx or the d1 lads those situations or maybe a pda situations or say pda situation and then you don't go directly on to the left main uh, uh, bifurcation because left main bifurcation one important thing is you should be always doing left main bifurcation under the guidance of either iwas or oct if you don't have iwas and oct in your cath lab which is actually a phenomena in our subcontinent sir, most of the centers do not have the imaging so those centers i don't recommend to do a Uh, by left main bifurcation basically without any iwas or oct guidance that is number one thing number two at least um, in my opinion that they should try all these cases on at least 50 uh, bifurcations across ladd d1 and other centers other places and then go ahead with the left main bifurcation it depends upon operator's uh, skill and experience 
but this is in generally a uh, phenomena that you should not try directly on left wing thank you professor sadi roman professor sadi roman the first thing is that dr rubikant uh, what uh, he has chosen or he has been chosen by uh, the ipdi that uh, uh, to talk about dk crush so you know that the most phenomenal one and uh, and dk crush means head spinning thing sometimes sometimes the steps are mistaken sometimes the steps are not uh, easily uh, performed in a step by step way because to memorize all these things at the in in a live setting and real world is sometimes very much difficult like dr ravikant in his first case if i am not wrong about that one that 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 in dk crash the uh, the most difficult most thing is the rewiring two times you have to rewire in your first case i have seen that you have rewired once possibly if if your other images are not there so sometimes it happens sometimes we are doing that one for the easiest things and for is remark about the distal strut the distal strut is for other texts not for the dikke crush not at all because of these things the jungling of the metals if you don't cross through the the proximal strut or at least the mid strut not the distal strut but it is very very important beautiful for other techniques where you should go for the distal strut but not for the dikke crush it should go for the proximal strut and for left main what we are talking because this is a burning question and you also have heard everybody has heard because lots of legendary uh, bifurcationists they are somebody sometimes telling that yeah i love going up to the ostium some somebody is very much hesitant to go for the ostium uh, the most important thing is here that which i have told several times in this platform also that if you don't have ivs or oct please please don't go for the left main yes bifurcation because if you have the ivs and oct then easily before stenting you can judge the the plaque morphology of the whole left main very easily very predictably you can then feel that whether the the disease in the left main has been extended up to the ostium or not because in the left main it's really really by and geography only you can't predict that how much the plaque has been distributed up to the ostium or not if it is up to the ostium then okay it's okay you can go for the ostium but other than that if you have a pot balloon of 8 mm or 10 mm and it it and and the left main is long enough to to provide that pot balloon then it's okay then why i will go for the ostial uh, left main stenting to make it much more because then at that time you will have to you will have to go for another uh, another improv improvised techniques to make it just to the left main so you will have another headache the two headaches that up to the ostium make it very beautiful because it should be flared up in that way so that it will never create any problem in the aorta ostial junction so that's all i can say but dk crush you know that i can tell the fellows and even to myself sometimes that you will memorize again and again before going for dk crush to yourself and then go for it because the rewiring twice and and kissing twice these two things is very very much important for dk crush to remember all the time because sometimes it's really really very hard to rewire because that one is the most important and pathetic headache at that time to rewire to rewire first time and to first time is easier second time it will be very very hard and that one is the is the most important headache at that time so to be very much uh, uh, what you sell that very much excel in rewiring techniques to understand the wear and to feel the wear to shape the wear in a beautiful way uh, these are very important things so you have to be a very very beautiful musician to be a perfect dk crush uh, interventionist that's all i can say thank you dr sabiroman 
till date, I, I, before I start with Dash, I printing the steps, Dr. Rovikan, 10 steps. And before going to cat labs, I just uh, steps printing the paper and <laughs> in the, and because my team, yeah. my team, the only, my only team, thing is that your cooperator should should memorize and your cooperator will make you remember that this exactly, step is exactly, missing exactly. please do it because at that moment you are always in the in your mind that i am losing the side branch or i am crushing the side branch and then i come in not cross it and the, and if the side branch is behaving abnormally with you with like an enemy that slow flow is there or something is happening there then you, you have to rush you have to rush at that time so that's why you know that tap, culotte, whatever you do, and these are lovable things. These are lovable bifurcation techniques that you, that you can go and you can sing a song and you can start again. But for DK crush, if you can't cross again, and if it's in your headache, it's, you know that at that time, and you have a side branch is compromised, what you can do? You have nothing to do there. But and that's is, the problem. But it's lucky, but our guidelines show so much nicely steps. If it is yeah. follow the steps, memorize, uh, complications less. Dr. Ashwin Dotto, do you hear me? Dr. Ashwin Dotto? Yes, Dr. Martin. I, I just I one know. question. Our one question to you. Uh, how will fellows just distal start and proximal start by the cat labs using the, how you a fellow identify the proximal start and distal start? Yes, proximal you know, distant or yeah, mid during, distant. Yeah, 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 during, during, during yeah, in the cat labs. or crossing yeah. to the circumflex or crossing to the side branch. Yeah. Uh, as Dr. Saidun was telling, proximal or mid start is the best one for decay crash. In other way, it will be to the distal. Yes. So it is sometimes difficult, number one. Uh, if it is cross, if it is crossed, sometimes it is difficult to understand whether I am going to the proximal or mid start. So one thing uh, the uh, Rabikant was telling that uh, now previous speaker uh, he was telling that OCT is a good way that uh, or IPAS but that is actually difficult to use frequently in these circumstances. But what I used to do uh, maximum magnification means zoom three times number one. <clears throat> Second thing. Uh, is the uh, not stand boost cannot be used here as you cannot use any balloon here. So uh, stand bo uh, that is magnification of the uh, picture means three times zoom can give sometimes the wire and start whether it is going proximally or mid. That 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 is the very important issue. I always try to follow this one, zooming of the stand. Yeah yeah yeah, uh, Mohsin, can I add here? Yes, yes. Because in my person, from my personal experience, that the yes. only, only the, the first thing is that that I was guided or OCT guided proximal uh, strut wearing. Uh, these are Japanese things, and I, I don't know. I don't, I can't understand. So the first thing. The so second thing is that these are the things that in G machine you have a stand boosting. You can do the live stand boosting without balloon in G in G if you have the GE machine. But if it's a Philip, then you you, you, you can't go for boost, stand boost uh, without balloon. So that's, if you have GE, you're fortunate enough, then you can go with the stand boosting with the magnification, well magnified, which Dr. Ashok is true. But the most important thing is that shaping of the tip of the wire, that the wire which you are wanting to take in the rewiring process. That yes. one is the most the shaping of the distal tip of the wear. That means yes. in the uh, that means the what the wear what you have what you will use for the rewearing. That uh -huh. wear should be shaped very well. So if it is shaped like a good, well J shaped, uh, then then it is possible because then you can you know you, you you can test you can test you can go distal then you can come proximal and the wire will help you to go there especially if the main branch is very big enough then you know that without the, the good shaping well shaping according to the anatomy of the of the side branch and the main branch that that portion is very important for uh, for going to the proximal start or the mid start. I think that one is very important. Thank you. Shape of the way. I know uh, one who will love DK crash, double kissing, Dr. Kaisan Nasulakhan. Always prefer double DK crash. Dr. Kaisan Nasulakhan, do you hear me? 
Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Love Digi Cash. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to all. Um, it, it's a wonderful discussion, though I joined late. I'm sorry for that. I was a family occupation. And anyway, Digi Cash is a technique for double uh, stenting technique, which is, uh, which, uh, which is from all, all clinical trials, it has been shown to be giving the best result. So about crossing the proximal distal or mid start is very difficult without seeing through OCT or IVAS. But what I do, when you pass the wire and it has got radio opaque tip, and just you, when you pass that wire, uh, just keeping the radio opaque tip in the stent start, if you take a cine, at least you can have an idea whether your, your wire has crossed the proximal or mid portion or distal portion. So I usually do that thing when I don't use IVAS. That, that's a, that's a uh, you know, poor man's technique to know that your wire is going through the proximal or mid start rather than distal start in the cash technique. But yes, I agree. Uh, for double stenting technique nowadays, I definitely prefer to use digital cash technique. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Khalik uh, Khalik Jawan, Doctor Khalik Jawan. Thanks uh, both the speakers for their brilliant presentation, nice presentation, elaborate presentation, and making very difficult things into simpler one for better understanding of the fellows which uh, today are attending today's uh, discussion. I have one or two questions uh, to the presenter. Number one thing is that uh, keeping the side branch stand one to two millimeter within the main branch is a very prerequisite for doing the decay crust technique. And is how, what is the tricks to keep uh, the main branch stand only one to two millimeter within the main branch? Or if you see after implantation of the stand that the stand has uh, extends about three to four millimeter within the main branch, then what will do that? Number two is that if the lesion length distal to the carina is long enough and you need to do the pot, uh, do you not want to do any post dilatation on the distal part of the uh, stand if it is long enough extending beyond the carina? And uh, is there any risk uh, which you will do first, either pot or distal post dilatation? Yeah, first thing is uh, how to keep the stent one millimeter inside. Most important thing is the main uh, wire branch, which you, you know, cross across, and then there's a distal wiring. So the angulation between the main and the side branch wiring is very important when you uh, talk about the uh, keeping the stent inside the uh, stent one. Second thing is uh, checking the balloon size or checking the uh, stand in a different angulations. If you are talking about the D1 uh, LED bifurcation, check it into the LAO cranial views. Those views are most important to see across whether we are into the exactly into the just inside the ostia. So for a different uh, side branches, you can see the two diagonal views and uh, understand that your stent is exactly one millimeter inside the side branch ostea or not. This is the most important thing uh, what I understand. And for my set opinion about your, uh, I will always prefer a pot uh, as a first uh, thing to do uh, when we have longer lesions. This is better to do a pot first and then uh, tackle about the distal uh, segment lesions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rabikanto, for your nice opinion. And how will deal a uh, 001 lesion in the left, left main bifurcation? 001 Medina lesion. Hello? That you were saying that uh, only the circumference is osteal. Right, 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 sir. Only L6 osteal lesion in left main bifurcation. How will deal? It's a very difficult proposition. Yeah, but generally a uh, left main crossover is the most important uh, uh, technique I feel if you are dealing with the left main uh, disease. Because putting the stent into a exactly circumflex ostea or LED ostea will always cause a pinching of one of the arteries. So all the uh, newer uh, uh, methods or all the studies shown that you should always have a left main to 
either LAD or left vein to circumplex crossing and do a pot for the left vein. It should be IVAS guided or the OCT guided, whatever it is. Just doing a osteal stenting um, uh, for circumplex or LAD is not preferred. That is always disappointing because if you do that, we'll find out if there is dystenosis involving the extending into the left main invariably. So, so easy to take decision when uh, it is in the LAD ostium, but when it is in the LCX ostium and LCX is a minor bronze dies less than 2.5 or around 2.5. This, this is a debate in every conference. In right. Right. Every Thank debate. you very much. Austral and LAD. So there are different uh, opinions of everyone, but my personal opinion, I'll go uh, left main cross But the, uh, uh, but the, uh, now the consensus is if the 001, the, sh the, the policy should be the inverse provisional. So you, you, you should go to the uh, left main to LCX and and the LD should be as a street as a side runs. Inverse provisional is the is the policy now. Correct. But that will depend upon actually the circumflex size. If it is a small one, why do you want to harm the LED? I get patient can tolerate the angina, I would go for continuing med a medication. But if the circumflex is big, you have to do something. Mosin, you have to unmute. Mosin. Unmute. If it is uh, lipman is non-dominant, non you can go for the gel balloon technique, like Dr. Saito. Uh, you do the, no, no. the LCX. The question is only LCX ostium is involved. If, or if, or is failing. if it is non-dominant or co-dominant, patient is otherwise not so much symptomatic. No, no, no. Yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, 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 uh, cross over to the left vent from the LCX, then you will do the reverse uh, uh, way of uh, oh. to the LED. Uh, long term result is not good. Thank okay, can, can I add something here? Yes, anyway. And something here that is it is uh, not only for the left main, distal left main, or the osteal LCX, or the so not like that one. It, it may it is possible for a large principal web. If you have a large principal worm has got a osteal disease, severe osteal disease, and patient had has angina, uh, or a patient has non-STMI for these things, what you will do? The same thing. So this is this because this the, why we are thinking only the left main, also non-left main in, yes. in the 001 cases are That's there, and uh, this is actually this is actually this has been in the Mats family, the the extended the modified Mats family. They have told the S S family it is it, it is under the S family. That means the size branch first and you are doing the side branch and then you are going for an inverted technique that is inverted uh, one means that inverted one yes. means that you are going for the side branch only also you can go for these things only a little bit a small one millimeter if the angle is favorable one millimeter is there and you are going for a kiss that's so all i want to add one thing for the pillows only yes if it is ACS, the thing is different. If it is chronic stable angina, ischemia trial shows, except left main osteal LED. The ischemic load is not so much. Medical management, stenting, revascularization, similar outcome. So that thing must be remembered by the fellows before doing the stenting to the LCX ostium, harming the left main or uh, OM osteum harming the dominant LCX, you should keep the clinical condition of the patient should be, and that should be reviewed if necessary. Uh, that one is one part. That one is Dr. Ashok is that is one is one part, but that one is that not all the time the fellows can get a patient with this sort of disease and what he, they will do. That's the question here. Not the question that, that all the osteal diseases you will have to treat. But the thing is that when these sort of things are coming, these are really a really a, really, a, really a burning point because at that time, what I will do? Because if I want to go for this uh, osteal uh, principal worm and a large principal worm and uh, supplying more than ten percent of myocardium and with a with a with an ACS setting there, so so you have to do something there. You can't go uh, uh, leave it alone there. So at that time, what is the that that was our 
discussion here that because that is a very important discussion very important question khalko jawan bhai has added here because this is really really very important this is really really problematic and here the people are telling now that you will go for the that 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 this sort of inverted techniques that that is the second mars family modified techniques cvc has shown us that it goes the inverted or you can tell us the reverse one the reverse crash or reverse things that means a little bit if it is the angle is not favorable then the stent is a little bit 1 to 2 mm beyond in the in the main vessel and then you go for a final kissing balloon inflation and then it's okay you can go uh, for it, it. I, i usually follow the modified jelly balloon technique like the side to because if it is modified jelly balloon technique you can put it the uh, main branch sometimes dr ashok you uh, uh, the angle thing. is very much important here if the angle is right angle suppose lcx is right angle to the left main led or om is right oh, angle to the no, lcx yeah. in that case in that case uh, very perfectly with 1 mm stent protrusion in the left main or in the main vessel it is possible if the angle is 90 degree but if there is angle is less than 70 it is very much difficult what about the if you want to uh, cover the uh, proximal part of the angle then distally protrusion will be uh, more Yeah, then so you will go for kissing. Is... Then you will go for kissing. Then you can go for so it. You, you can to... manage that one. You can manage so you that to... one. So you, yeah, you, you have to go double uh, stent strategy. Then. No, 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 not the double stent strategy all the time. You can go just only for ballooning and kissing because all the time you may be in your left main. What you are doing, you are doing that sometimes final kissing balloon inflation. You are doing without putting a stent in the LCX. You are doing okay, it. But in your but, but right. in your part side branch side branch is stenting. Kissing through the left main LED is not wise. A left main, not left main, non left main. The circumference is the OM and the circumflex. It is non left right. main. Yeah. Even the uh, circumflex is also true. Circumflex is the main branch. No, no. Circumflex is supplying the grooving part, and the principal OM is branch supplying the main myocardium. You know that one. The the by but the surgeon is not going to touch the the Most distal simple. LCX, but the principal OM branch has to be touched by the is 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 the main my uh, main uh, determinant for dominant, supplying the myocardium. If, if it is dominant LCX, you I am telling about the principal OM. I am not telling about a small two point two five OM branch. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Sadir Bhai. Uh, our uh, Dr. Tanbi, do you hear me? Dr. Tanbir Ahmed. Dr. Tanbir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, I had a question. Like uh, DK crash in case of left main bifurcation, one 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 definitely is the preferred choice. But in scenarios where we are dealing with a primary PCI where there is thrombus load. Uh, And the one 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 list. The LCX is a vessel. We don't go as DK crash dilatation and tuning and flow. Doctor Tanvir, I'm not able to hear. Robi, Robi, can but him. He did a primary PCI. The question is in a primary PCI whether uh, DK crash is. Uh, is it the question? Yes. 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 So in a primary PCI, I'll uh, prefer not to go with the DK uh, DK crash. Make it simple. It's better to go with the provisional stenting. Yes. Yes. And then uh, for one stent strategy, if required, if the side branch gels, if the side branch has become similar, yeah, 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 yeah. Then only you go yes. for a double stent technique because it's not wise to go DK crash in a where the time is important in cases like primary PCI. Thank you. Not only time, actually, DK crash has got a uh, drawback. The stent thrombosis is uh, lots uh, of balloons. Uh, uh, high, highest in DK crash. About uh, I, I can't remember the exact. Maybe three uh, to four percent uh, over years. Okay. Uh, Doctor Aisha Kader. Doctor Aisha Kader, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So my question was actually, I think we saw cases where the first crush was done with the wire in the side branch, and some where the first crush was done without the wire. So what is the better practice in DK crush when we do the first crush of the side yes. branch stent? Do we keep the side branch wire in situ, or do we take it out and 
does that practice differ in whether you're doing it in a left main versus non left main bifurcation? No, the first crush, the wire. Really nice question. Here we come. There should not be a wire when you do a first crush. So, but then it's, you know, when you do a maximum cases, it becomes sometimes operator dependent, as the doctor, professor was saying. Sometimes you do the, miss the, some of the steps there. But uh, in ideal scenario, it should not be done without wire. It should be done without wire. The first crush should be always without wire. Nice. Raisha, first crush should be the without wire. Raisha, do you hear? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. But we have seen cases with the wire in situ. That was why I asked the question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. It's actually operator Thanks. dependent. Actually. Even yeah. operator to operator it, case to case a, dependent. Bifurcation is operator dependent sometimes. So. Uh, Dr. Padil, I have any harm in doing it. Dr. Padil, Dr. Padil. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Patil, uh, do you know the, the recently European bifurcation club have a recommendation uh, in case of uh, left main bifurcation, if you go to the provisional standing, you should routinely uh, 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 dilate the, the uh, LCX balloon. What is your practice? Because, have you, hello, can you follow me? Dr. Ravikant, when do the left main bifurcation, the provision is starting, you always kissing the LCX or uh, LED LCX kissing? Doctor, I'm not able to hear. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I, I can hear you yes. now, yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Ravikant, uh, here. In case of provisional standing in bifurcation relation, do you routinely, routine practice to uh, dilate the LCX stand to open the star? No, I don't do that, sir. Recently, this is recently European Bipartisan Club had recommended this this thing. It should yes. be, it should yes. be because 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 the, because the, I'm, I'm telling because if yes. if if near future if there yes. is a, is there a, any blockage in the LCX, then you will be difficult. And another thing, the star in uh, stars in the LCX ostium is increase the stent thrombosis and initial stenosis. For this reason, recently they have. Uh, yes. recommended these things. Another thing, uh, regarding the uh, uh, take off or not take off the uh, left and ostium, there are some physiologic view. The main principle, we have to preserve the left main ostium because there is a sprinter which regulate the blood into LRD and ostium. There are some situation where we cannot leave it because we, my practice, when I, I, I take up the left main, left main ostium or not, I ask my cath lab, how is my balloon size? Is the balloon size of six to eight available? Is okay. And I add the five because to operate the left main ostium regulatory in sprinter, it takes five millimeter. So if the, uh, if the, uh, uh, my balloon is eight to post dilate it, and I may, uh, I added five to so 13. If the left main is 30 millimeter or less, I cover the left main ostium. It more than 13 millimeter, then I keep the ostium and 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 uh, do not touch the ostium. The different school of thought first. I think it is different opinion. But yeah. uh, Dr. Saito always doing the LCX uh, open, start open always in Japan because in, in, in younger age, if another student needed LCX. Why are we causing the stent through the LED start? Uh, Dr. Saibi Roman, you always uh, uh, open uh, the LCX start? Uh, yeah, uh, it depends. It depends sometimes. It depends really sometimes where because of the plaque morphology in the left main itself. If the plaque is too much there, the calcification is too much there, I don't like to uh, lose the uh, virginity of the, of the LCX. I don't like it that much okay but if it is not that much in that case it's better to open but when you you like to because i always i always like to it, I'm, I'm tempted to open that stars because lcx is a big artery and uh, and but the thing is that always it should be through the distal strut it should be through the distal strut. Otherwise, the appositions and some sort of deformation of the stand in the left main will be there. So that one should be done very meticulously. 
Dr. Pradeep has said really, really, because the EBC has the recent most the books uh, concerns us as telling preferably, preferably, preferably you should go for the uh, the kissing balloon, final kissing, and the final kiss should be by the distal strut. Yes, yes. because the, the problem is when you, you are we are going to the uh, uh, inverse provisional in L zero zero one when left main to uh, uh, LCX then. All the, all the time we open the uh, LED stars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I tell, I sometimes I tell the surgeons that all the time you have a 2.5 LED and you have a three millimeter LCX. Okay, but yet 2.5 LED, I have to manage some way. Surgeon is telling, oh, LED, LED is there. So not all the time, LED is the best, the most important thing, because sometimes LCS is uh, supplying yes. the, the, almost half of the myocardium rather than the LED itself. Yes. But always, you know that interventionists are always in problem with the surgeons that, oh, you can't treat the LED well. So, okay, let, just it. I am going to take it. A but they'll say more myocardium. Uh, yes. But so, you have to, you have to, you have to optimize LED by some way. If yeah. you want to do a intervention, that's the problem. Yeah. Dr. Robika, it's already 11 o'clock in India. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I think Dr. Subhir Roman, Professor Subhir Roman will, uh, will talk. Then we, Dr. Professor Subhir, Madam, do you hear me? There's nice discussion, Dr. Robika. Everybody are enjoying your session. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a yeah. very interesting uh, topic. Uh, uh, Dr. Professor Subhir Roman, Madam. Very, very nice uh, presentation and discussion. Very live, no doubt about it. One or two things I want to say because it's for the fellows. Yeah. Uh, don't discourage them so much, you know. Uh, they are, today they are fellows, tomorrow they will be like you. So when they want to do this, uh, this uh, DK crash thing, uh, which is uh, very good, well discussed, I'm in favor of leaving this cell complex open. I'm in favor of uh, doing as little as possible, but if we have to do it, we'll do it. Uh, the two strand strategy, DK crash is better. In our country, it is also a lot of people are doing, but for the fellows, what I'm trying to say, don't get uh, disheartened by that. Always, if, if you are already in a stage that you can do very nicely, simple uh, PCI is not there. You think simple, it might end up with the complication. So that's why when you are comfortable with the technique of doing PCI stenting and uh, preparing the landing zone and uh, sizing of the stent, everything, then when you start this DK crush thing, you always take your um, advice or keep your senior with you and or uh, observe the senior whenever they are doing it keep the, uh, be there and see, uh, you don't have to memorize and you don't have to memorize every day two, two word, two crush, two balloon, two kiss. These are nothing. Once you start doing is nothing because so you be uh, with them when they're doing it. This is your first step. Second step is when you are doing it, your senior should be there as well in the beginning. You do five to 10, um, if you even do five or 10, less than 10, but more than five, you'll be comfortable. You don't have to memorize like uh, uh, my Pradeep <laughs> and, and uh, Mohsin is saying that you have to memorize the thing. You don't have to memorize at all. So don't get disheartened that we are all not discouraging you. We are uh, encouraging you, but we are encouraging you to be safe, to do it perfectly, not to land in a complication where you will regret why did I do it. So that's why it is, you can do it, you cannot, you might not do it today, but you will be able to do it tomorrow. But um, always I have seen you more observed, go to the cath lab when they're doing, doing the DK crash, go to the cath lab, watch them. Then you do in a, by, uh, uh, under supervision. And after su under supervision, if you're okay, you can, fly your your running time in the uh, uh, runway is finished you can fly so these are uh, the and the other thing about the where whether you're going in the proximal start or mid start these 
there are two things about the poor man like us. We don't have a lot of things. What we do is that we take the radiopic uh, side of the, uh, the tip of the wear, shape it up, and try to see it that we have crossed. Once you have crossed without any dye, take a scene and then zoom it as much as you can. And then you can see it. You feel, you, then you will feel comfortable. Uh, when there was no IVAS, when there was um, no, what you call uh, your um, OCT, we did a lot of main stem, but double one was basically crash and pot, but not the DK crash. DK crash, if you, are, you want to do it perfectly, perfectly what you mean in inverted commas perfectly, that is you need one of these devices to see whether you have done it properly. But if you don't have it and if you are doing it and you know that you can do it, then you do these two things is that tip of the wire crossing there, take a picture and then zoom it and see. Most of the time you'll be okay. That is my advice. Thank you very much to give me the time to say this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vikant. Thank you, Dr. Vikant. Dr. Marchand also doing a great lecture today. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, another faculties. And thank you, Bexingo Pharma, with us last eight months in the COVID era. Uh, our uh, tomorrow is the Merry Christmas Day, and uh, after seven days is the new Happy New Year. Dr. Saibu Rahman, I think, finished the 31st December. Our bifurcation, Dr. Saibu Rahman, and Dr. Uh, Habib Rahman will talk on the college on the 31st December. Welcome, everybody. Dr. Uh, Wadu, sir, please close the session. Thank you. Together, yeah, New Year is thirty first. Thirty first night. We are, we are dealing with the Thadi Roman yeah. and Habib Roman. I think Ganga Bamba. Yeah. Yes, sir. Ganga was Saidur. Yeah. Madam. Yes, sir. Wish you all the best. Full full elastic lecture. Yeah. The interactive session you have observed. There is a very lively discussion of what. Uh, one should one think about one's problem. But I should always say that each and every patient is unique. And please do not be too much dogmatic. Yes, yes. Prepare what to do to get the most uh, appropriate result with the whatever hardware you have got. Because we are dealing with situations where you do not have abundance of everything. So you have to be aware of that. You have to make the most out of the whole situation. And please, again, fellows, please be aware of what you can actually do, what you cannot do. And as uh, my mentor was saying, Professor Sophia Rahman, when you initially start the left main, have a senior with you, then you can do it with a great inspiration in your heart and with the belief that if you were in trouble, there's somebody who can actually bail you out. And thank you again. Thank you, everybody. And good night. Yeah, good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Arif. Thank you, Dr. Sadurbhai, 31st night. Me within this, I'm on. I'm on. Actor dinner this show. Thank you. Thirty first night. six milligram for ivermectin. I can to FDA. Bolte se ita to animal drug. What is it? Madam, medicine society the group for say is a very good drug. Ivermectin. Bangladesh medicine society. Their trial last published on the FDA latest report. Taki. Madam, Madam, FDA, FDA, Akon, FDA, Bishash Kuran, Akon, Madam, Akon, Akon, Coronata, politicized to exist. Come down, 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 come Virus Marasha to Nana Kushi Marbe, Ashoka, 
আমরা যখন এই অবস্থায় না আমরা আমরা এই অবস্থায় গেলে তখন ম্যাডাম ওই নল লাগাইলো কি না লাগাইলো ওই অবস্থায় তো আমরা থাকি না আমাদের নল লাগাই ফেলে তখন আমাকে বলছিল তোরা কিন্তু যাই করিস আমাকে এইগুলো দিবি না আমরা দিছিলাম না জানি ওনার ছেলে আমি খবর রাখতাম ওনার ছেলে জানা সে বলতে পারবে কি আব্বা দুইটা আব্বা বলে দিছে কোন রিসার্চ সিটেশ আমাকে করবা না যা দিবা ফার্মাকোথেরাপি দিয়ে আমাকে দিবা কিন্তু আমাকে রিসার্চ সিটেড করবা না এটা ছিল ওনার ইয়ে সে না আমি বলতেছি যে ইভেন ইয়াং দে খুবই খারাপ লাগে এই যে খারাপ ইয়ে কেউ আমাদের ছেড়ে ছেড়ে আমাদের ইয়াং রা চলে যাচ্ছে পুরা মারা গেল পুরা আমার ইন্টারনে ছিল সামবডি ইন আইসিইউ এই যে সাইদুর হাসতেছে যে অল অল দিস নলস এন্ড কানেকশন দিস এন্ড দ্যাট ইন আইসিইউ তে রিয়েলি খারাপ লাগে জি ম্যাডাম না আমাদের তো করোনা ওয়ার্ড আছে ম্যাডাম এর জন্য আমরা জানি আর আমরা ফিল করছি আমরা দেখছি আর কি আমাদের তো করোনা আইসিইউ আছে ওখানে আমরা তো پیشنট গুলোকে দেখে আমাদের খারাপই লাগে আমাদের একজন রেসিডেন্টও মানে আলটিমেটলি মানে অলমোস্ট ভেন্টিলেটেড তারপর তো হাই ফ্লো অক্সিজেন টক্সিন দিয়ে লম্বা সময় পার করে এখন আস্তে আস্তে গ্র্যাজুয়ালি উঠছে এইজন্য বলছি ম্যাডাম যে অনেক সময় করোনা তো এটা এর বিহেভিয়ার এত আনপ্রেডিক্টেবল যে নল টল দিয়ে অনেক সময় উঠে যায় কিন্তু ম্যাডাম কাজেই আপনি নল দিয়েন না বলেন না আমরা প্লিজ চেষ্টা করব চেষ্টা করতে হবে ম্যাডাম সবার জন্য চেষ্টা করা উচিত ম্যাডাম ঢাকা থেকে ঝাপা ঝাপির মধ্যে নাই ওয়ান দিন করোনাতে হারবো কেন ম্যাডাম আমি অন্য কিছু রাজরোগ হলে একটা কথা ছিল না ম্যাডাম মানে ভালো থাকেন সাবধানে থাকেন ম্যাডাম আপনাকে দরকার আমার ইনশাআল্লাহ বঙ্গবন্ধুছে <laughs> Thank you. Nice seeing you and talking to you. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you. Moshin and Saidur. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see you in 31st. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Th